podcasting with Kerry Jones. Hi guys, and welcome to this week's podcast. This week's guest needs no introduction, really, for he was one of the biggest names in the sport. He called in to visit me this week, but he doesn't actually live too far away now, and he has just moved to Wales. In his words, it's back to the future, as he spent a lot of his childhood here. He talks of his recent award for the American Fly Fishing Hall of Fame. Fantastic achievement. And he is recognised as one of the country's leading watercolour artists. And this year, he has a personal goal of getting into oil painting. Thus, he talks of his continued passion for fishing for schools. We go back a long time, as we used to do features and articles together for Trout Fishermen, back around 25 years ago. I also had him on as a guest on one of my early podcasts, when I visited him then in his home in Dorset. Welcome to my chat once more with Charles Jardine. It was good to meet you again, Charles. It's been uh, a, probably about a year and a half, I think, when I came down to your place last. Oh, it's longer than that. Two years, maybe? Yeah. What yeah. are Well, this is what I've come to now. Yeah. You've actually come over to God's country now. A mm. wet God's country today. It's kind of damp and it's created its own problems. But yeah, here I am. You know, with Dyson, with Dyson and my fiance. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you got a new on. place. How long have you been there? Not knew long. everything. Knew everything. I've been there four days. Four days. I, uh, I've moved around, Kerry. I mean, I, I've never had to be anywhere particularly. Um, yeah. As long as I have to, I have to go up to London um, because the foundation central office is there. But um, I don't really have to be anywhere. I mean. You know that song, Your Home is Where Your Hat Is. I mean, it, it's very much like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and Karen's roots are here. She was born in Cardiff and, and she has made a life around Newport. And I hadn't really made my life around Yeovil, not really. And so it made perfect sense to come here because it's the start of really everything for me. I mean, I, some of my earliest recollections here well not necessarily in the valleys but but certainly over over a little bit further over on the ask and so it it made absolute sense when i came down to you last annabelle was with you was she living with you then or? no 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 no, oh. no she's a surf child i mean she she lives for the wave um she's down in devon and on the devon cornwall border she's down in portsmouth just outside so she, yeah she's uh, have you any plans for fishing i guess in wales now there's oh gonna gosh, be some yeah. new waters you're absolutely. gonna be absolutely it's like a new playground it's, it's like going back to the future really i mean you know i i as you know i grew up fishing the ask and yeah you know i'm, I'm gonna go off piste a bit because somebody was fairly unkind uh, on facebook but then this person particularly is um and said, oh, you, you said derogatory things about the Welsh. Well, I never have and never would because that's part of my soul. I mean, I, the, my earliest recollections were people from this valley fishing the usk and tying flies in their fingers. Mm. And, you know, th- those fingers, Kerry, were, were stained with the coal face that's just dotted around where we're speaking now and you know i've revered not only the anglers of this this area but the fish that 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 populate this area you know for me it's a it's a rekindling of a love affair yeah it really is like the valleys itself you know the ask is a grand beautiful uh, river but when you look at short distance away the valleys where, where you, the sort of thing, the coal mine, and exactly as you described now, the landscape is totally different. But actually, the trout fishing is probably as good or better than the ask for trout fishing. It's incredible, the tough. Well, I, I was very, very fortunate. Last year, I got to do a, a photo shoot with the lovely Terry Bromwell. And, yeah. 
You know, we, we he showed me and gave me a open the door a little bit, a little bit ajar on the tap, and I, I had no idea. And there's this ribbon of silver joy going through this industrial backdrop. And yeah. it, 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 you know, it blew me away because I couldn't believe you had this juxtaposition of, of you know, conurbation and industry over here and, and fishing. I mean, the fact that we didn't catch very much, I think he caught a grayling. It didn't matter. It actually didn't matter. And there he is taking these wonderful photographs of the bird life and so forth. So he's an incredible photographer. He, he is a very good natural history photographer. And I think he's a lot better than he even thinks he yes, is. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a he, fisherman. He's one of the best in the country. The oh, he, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, but that I was going to come to this, that this countryside has sculpted some of the fan, most fantastic anglers that we've ever come across. You know, mm. I grew up in the, in the, in the legend of... Of um, of sweet and all these others, you know, and to watch sweet cast was a thing of joy. I mean, well, beyond joy, beauty. I mean, and sweet's um, tackle shot that's moved, but I mean, Gene's still there. I think. Oh, you um, didn't know. It's everything was is closed now. Everything. No. Yeah, it, oh. everything in the shop went to auction. No. Last month. Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? Even the shop sign. Oh. I don't know if you know uh, Will Millard. He's, I've uh, heard of Will Millard. Yeah, yeah, he put a post up, and he I'm not sure if he went to the auction or he put a bid in for this, this certain sign of the shop, yeah. which was like, it looks like basic, you know, like yeah. hand-painted. Yeah. You wouldn't think it'd fetch much, but he wanted to put a few hundred quid in it. He yeah. went for thousands. Really? Yeah. But I think that's what the tradition means. I mean, you, you, you had... Um, this this tradition of Granham and you had this tradition of March Brown and yeah. you had this and you had that. So, you know, far from feeling that I'm not a native, and I, I'm not, I mean, obviously I'm not, but it is sort of coming home, really. Was it Molly Sweet, the woman, or was it somebody else? Yeah, there was Molly Sweet, but um, it was Jean. Jean, that's um, it. That had the shop after, I think, the, I think she was the daughter. I'm not... Right, I think it'd be nice so. to chat with her actually. Yeah, just it, it would. I mean, and you know, going, going in that shop. Did you ever go in there? No, never oh, went. It, you know, I thought I lived in chaos. <laughs> but <laughs> honestly, I mean, but she knew where everything was. I mean, if you went in there and asked for something about forty years ago, yeah. you'd probably find it. I wish I did go. You know, you, well, you've missed an opportunity. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry to hear that because yeah. it is a, a moment of, of my life gone. Um, It'd no been a question. photo opportunity. I like stuff like that, you know, where the room is like full chaos, like you said, really, yeah. but organised chaos. Well, it was terribly organised. I mean, she knew exactly where things were. Yeah. No, she was great. I noticed as well, I had a, a quick squint at your Facebook page. Uh-oh. And one of your last posts, because we are only just into the new year, yeah. New Year's resolutions, and you said... One of them was to embrace a new country. Yeah, well, that's here. That's what you meant by that's it, I guess. That's yeah. exactly what I meant. And right. You know, th there is no going back. Once you've made decisions, and I've got to that point in my life where you, you go, right, okay, that's it. And it, it is. I mean, I found the girl, you know, I want to be with, and the family are all grown up pretty much. I'm grandfather. And so, you know, it's time for new adventures. I haven't got many of them left, Kerry. <laughs> so I, you don't know, do you? I better get cracking. And then the other thing as well, I noticed. You said you said uh, number two was you get your website up and running. What's the story with that? Well, I, I'm rubbish at websites. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's always the case, isn't it? Well, it's something which you need, but I'll do that. It's at the bottom of the list. Well, I've got this lovely lady up in Shropshire, and she said she'll do it, and I I, I drive her to distraction. Um, and I said, well, yeah, I know I get you this. And she wants this list of stuff and it always sort of kind of gets up to the finish line and, and drops dead. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm determined that this, this time it gets over the finish line. I'll help you if you need, because that's the last two weeks. That's all I've done. I've sat it's, in front of a screen yeah, doing it, well, she's, my photography. Yeah, she's really good at it, but my goodness me, hang on, I've got a Labrador. I've got suddenly found a Labrador nose. I thought it was lap. you tapping my knee. No, <laughs> no, no. The other thing I noticed, um, you said uh, you want to paint more. Oh, I've got to. 
well, actually, I got a living room. I need doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're only good at yeah, emotion. No, absolutely rubbish at it. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm not actually. I'm, I'm pretty hopeless. Um, but no, I, I've um, Karen very kindly got me lessons because I've always used watercolor, and yeah. watercolor is a is an awkward, awkward creature. Um, you have to work fast ish unless you use dry dry brush, which means you can take a bit more time. But it's about spontaneity. And, you know, I, I, I've, I've done all that and I, I enjoy doing it. I'm not a genius at it. I'm adequate. But it, I want to embrace oils um, because, you know, I just don't think you can be a proper artist unless you do. So I'm in awe of Dave Miller. I mean, he's, he's just incredible. But um, I want to have a go at it. And she very kindly, Karen's very kindly got me a series of courses with a local oil painter. I liked her stuff. And um, so I'm going to take some lessons. Wow. See how that goes. Well, it's a totally different, it's a bit like you taking photographs and then somebody some suddenly taking away your camera and putting a brush in. That's the difference yeah. between a camera and a, and a paintbrush. And for me, a watercolor brush and an oil brush. Yeah, yeah. It's totally different. Yeah. Everything is is altered. Everything. Mixing colors as well. And Mixing colors. The the, the the color changes. The the, the qualities. The properties. Um, even the textures. Yeah. Because I'm used to fluidity, and yeah. here you've got resistance. It you seems know? to be with me. Um, like watercolors is a more delicate. It's almost more romance to watercolours, whereas oil is a little bit more bolder. It, it Yes and no. With watercolour, when you apply a wash, and that's what we call it, you, you start to build up layers, okay? And you, you can actually drop in colour to make something very vibrant, very strong. I mean, you, you can make watercolour very bold. I mean, if you look at some of the Japanese work and some of the Chinese work, where they really are strident with their watercolors, they're Is very that? bold, yeah. And you know they'll take a cerise or a, you know a really bold color and just drop it in there and watch it explode. But if you um, if you you can't do the same thing with oils. Oils is a bit more of a process, I think. Um, it's hard to to create that spontaneity, but uh, we'll see. I mean, crikey, that's are you going to fit it all in? Don't know. <laughs> this is what I'm going to come to next as well. I was going to ask you, how Did was it? your season? So re great. as regards to fishing, you had a good season? Yeah. Yeah, not bad. When, um, you, when you find water, I suppose. When I found water, um, yeah, it was lovely. I mean, I did a lot of different things. I fished a lot of reservoirs, and I know that actually we were sharing the same reservoir, but we didn't know it. Yeah. Um, we are at Wimbledon. I did rather well that day, you actually. You did, yeah. 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 Right but by I, the dam, by the aerators. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We were bad people. Yeah, I was with a guy, Simon Peters, okay. and uh, we were up, what's the arm called? I think Upton Arm, is Upton it? Upton Arm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Looking for browns and it was a <laughs> tough old day. We had one or two. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, deep, deep down uh, and follows. But, um, and then we were travelling around then and I didn't realise they had aerators there because I hadn't been there for a long time. Yeah. And then I said, oh, we'll give it a try. And then we were fishing and he, he turned his back and he said, I'm sure that's Charles Jardine there. And I didn't realise you were, was it, you know, yeah. 50 yards away? Yeah. I was with Trevor, who's the guru. And you were just catching and catching and catching oh, yeah. and catching. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, amazing. Uh, amazing what a die three and a snake will do, isn't it? <laughs> it was a snake, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 You didn't see any watercolours with snakes, though, do you? You haven't done any? <laughs> you will do shortly. But no, I, I mean, I've enjoyed the Froom too. I mean, I was fishing the Froom a lot last year and I think, we went down there with Annabelle to do some he photographs did. last time. You had a great in then? Yeah, um, but we had a lot of trout. And, it, it, you know, that is the river of my soul. I mean, I, I talked about the Usk, but, you know, if I could only fish ever one river all my life, I think it would be the Froom. I, I just rather like it. It's a lot different to the Usk, isn't it? Oh, it's totally I mean, it's totally different to any river. Yeah. It's small. The fish will come up and take a dry fly readily. Um, it's very visual, it's, isn't it? And it's, it's meandering. And it's yeah, it, it. But it's got this timeless quality about it because you know you could march straight out of a, a, 
a Thomas Hardy novel yeah. and walk across that water meadow and think, crikey, you know, it, it's almost, yeah, it's like Brigadoon only with a fly rod. It reminded me when I was there with you of a place I, I didn't fish, but I stayed at a friend's house and it was in Salisbury. So what river would that have been? Well, Salisbury is known for five rivers. So you've got a uh, choice of them. So but it was the, very similar, small. You've got the Nadder, under- you've got the Wiley, um, you've got a Bourne there, um, you've got an Ebble, and you've got the Nadder. Um, yeah, that's it. But it, I I'm don't probably know which missing one it was. One. Yeah, but it was very, like I said, it was meadows, tall grasses, and it is, it is an evening time. You're almost yeah, if, like it, a film if it was scene. going, if it was Salisbury and going through actually Salisbury, it'd probably be one of the um, strands of the Avon yeah. because they ribbon through the, the 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 water meadows there. Yeah. Going um, on to you were saying you had a, a good season, but you had a all busy seasons year. are good seasons, Carrie. Yeah, yeah, it is. When you think about it, you can't have a bad one, can no. you? No, I mean I. I fished mullet for the first time, got absolutely enamoured with mullet. I mean, that's just so much fun. And, yeah, there's there's so many different aspects. It is, and if you're going with the right people, it isn't. Um, They've nailed it. I mean, people like Colin McLeod and um, Paul Jennings, they've really got it dialed in. They really have. It's something, I've had one or two. Biggest one I've had was £5 from the River Ogmore. That's good. It is, yeah. On a tiny little layers here, size yeah. 14. But um, it's a bit like salmon to me. I mean, you can spend so much time on them and then, you know, it's it's like a waste my, of time. M- my thoughts on salmon have not moved. They've not changed. Life's too short for fish for them. Silver vermin, dear boy. <laughs> silver vermin. Uh, there's two things that are going to come on as well because um, you've, had a busy year apart from your fishing and you also did your sixth london marathon yeah how did that go <laughs> not well <laughs> did you actually finish it yes i jolly well did nearly swore then um yeah it was tough um i was going really well up to mile 20 between 20 and 21 i was going really really well i was going to do probably my best time wow. and and then my Glucose stroke blood sugar dropped to three, um, which is not good. Um, uh, medically, it's not good at all. And collapsed, um, to cut a long story very short. Wow. And had to be revived with chocolate digestive biscuits and Cadbury's twirls. So um, you've done it again about and I was a mile later. <laughs> I was force fed um, the these things <laughs> and, <laughs> and I actually had the audacity to say that's lovely can I have a cup of tea now and they said they did actually the lovely St John's ambulance brought me a cup of tea wow but I was there for about an hour and three quarters recovering and um, then they said right we've got a bus for you coming <laughs> and uh, I said um, where's it going to take me to and they said back to the the end and I said Finishingly. I think I think you've m- misread me. Um, can you keep me here? And they said, no, we can't keep you here. I said, right, well, thank you very much. You've been fantastic. I'll see you in a little while. Got back on that course and finished it. So how many miles were left then? Uh, about six. Wow, you're saying that as if, oh, it was only about six. Yeah, it was. It was only about six. Do you still do it? I'm never going to do another marathon. Uh. It's too much. You know, I'm a couple of weeks, that's weird talking now I'm about three weeks off my 70th birthday and I'm not going to do another but <laughs> they do one in Cardiff the Cardiff half marathon they can they can do it anywhere <laughs> they like there's one in Newport I'm not doing it um but I, I am going to do a trail run um I'm going to do one in Colorado again for fishing for schools I see any man is the only reason I do this man and um I'm going to do that, and um, it's a trail run at altitude. So it's in Colorado. It's going to be, I've told Karen it's seven miles. Actually, it's 13, but... You haven't, right. She won't be listening to this, is that right? No, she won't <laughs> listen to this. But you get to fish along the route. 
and it's called the Fisherthon. Oh, it's either the Fisherthon or the Flyerthon, but whatever it is, I'm doing it in July, and it's gonna be a hoot. Wow. Yeah. You'll have to do some practice around Taliban. I'll do some practice along Taliban, but I think probably going up some of the the beacons is probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Have you spent much time on the lakes and the rivers no, in I had, Wales? Uh, not, not enough. I mean, I I went up to Taliban, and I I started my season there last year, and I just it was windy, it was rainy, and tell me something I don't know, um, <laughs> but I just. Kerry, I didn't come to terms with it. I didn't understand it. I need to go up there with you, I think. And, you know, you'll say, what on earth do you think you're doing? I mean, I started where, the, you know where those, I don't know whether the rivers come in or they go out, but there's a sort of ribbon of, it's almost like a little delta. Yes. Um, the top end. And that looked really inviting, and I fished it really hard, nothing. Yeah. But, it, it's and then very shallow. I kept getting caught up on weed and stuff. And yeah, the channels there. You got to watch if it's if it's clear, you can see it. But if it's bit coloured, you literally could be a foot away from a eight foot channel. Yeah, I know. I've realised that. You know, you could actually see by the topography. But I, 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 I just didn't understand it. Yeah. And I need to. You know, that's another unfinished business. You see, as soon as you open up that yeah. little. You know, Colonel, that that onion, that onion of fly fishing life. You go, oh look, there's another layer. Yeah, there is, is something always, and it's good to have new goals and challenges, Absolutely. isn't it? Yeah, you've got to have them. The Taliban to me, I'd always fished it for years, one day a season, one right. of those places. Yeah, and then during lockdown, then I bought a season, and do you know what it gripped me then? You get to know a lake, you go often, and it's I am not a fish of a, I am not a two pound fish there yet. I've had a few pound and a half, a bit more. But you get to know, without even leaving the house, when it's worth going. It's right. very much, very much the last hour of light water or a dirty day. On a normal day, where's the time? If you've got a bit of sun, where's the time? Really? Yeah. They, don't, they keep the distance. And, and if you've got a big wind and it's dark, they come in, they, they're active. And the last hour of light, it can be awesome. I've had six, eight fish in the last hour. Really? Yeah, so it's it's totally different to any other water I fish. Small really. and black, it's got to be, isn't it? Surely. Yeah, you will get yeah small traditional patterns like your black panel, uh, you know Zulus and Hairsus and nymphs as well. Delbacks okay. is right. good, but um, most the the boys I know who has decent fish up to three pound even some of them. Blimey. They fish in big black tadpoles. Are they really? Yeah. Oh. Which is, um, I've done it once or twice, but it's the. I think you get to a stage in life, you like to catch fish by a certain method, not right. If you want to catch a fish, you got to do it this way, you know. Yeah. It's just enjoyable then for me, yeah. you know. Yeah. But something, a goal I could do this year, which I saw and I've never seen, you might have seen it somewhere. Uh, it was in April, if I remember right, and there was so many fish hitting frogs i don't mean really yeah no, i haven't seen that haven't you no and i've taken photographs as well and there were half eaten frogs all the way down the shore really yeah and i could see you know like fish hitting rainbow uh, rainbows hitting fry feeders in yeah. Rutland or whatever you see the crashing yeah. it was exactly like that and i thought it didn't fry until i realized the big frogs you know three inch frogs four inch frogs and uh, so I know there's big fish in there. It's just getting them to take is the thing. Well, we've got to start tying those frogs. Yeah. That's what we've got to do. And there's <laughs> yeah. enough American patterns out there. I guess so, yeah. Why don't we try it? Yeah. April time, though. No. Yeah, well, I'll... It'd be I'll, nice to do it. I'll get frogs spinning and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Another thing, and one of the things I wanted to chat to you about, and we were going to have uh, a chat, another episode of podcast, a couple of months ago, actually. Mm. Because you had uh, a certain um, award. Yeah. And you had to go to America. The I Fly did. Fishing Hall of Fame. I know. So what's the story with that then? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you said you got the wrong guy. Yeah, I did, pretty much. Um, That's something special, isn't it? It was extraordinary. I mean... It, How did you come about? I don't know. 
I mean, I actually don't know. You get voted by a board. I mean, it's it's exactly like the Oscars, or indeed, I suppose what they do with the Hall of Fame with rock and rollers. Um, apparently, I was chatting. It's it's a bit lovey and name droppy, darling. Um, but I was chatting to Jamie Daughtry, which is Roger's son, and um, he he said, "Well, what are you up to?" I said, "Well, I'm just nipping across to New York to pick up this award." And he t- and his dad was there, and he was. He, he, he was. He was know, in New York. No, 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 no. If he had, I would have asked him to play. <laughs> uh, what's this? The fishery, is it? Yeah, at, at Lake. Him? Yeah, at Lake Down, yeah. and because um, I, I pop down there occasionally because it's my old neck of the woods. But as, apparently, his, his dad is really jealous. Apparently, is he? <laughs> it's, well, not jealous, but I mean, he said, "Wow, blimey, wow, blimey." You know. What did you say? Who are no, you? No, 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 no. You don't even go there. <laughs> but um, no, he's swing for you, would he? No, he wouldn't. But Roger is one of the most delightful people that you'll ever meet. I'd love to meet him. He well, we'll make it happen. I mean, he really is a joy. Um, and witty, committed, does so much for uh, children and cancer too. Does he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I he, was a massive Who fan. Um, well, he, you know what? I listened to some of his stuff um, that he did on a recent tour, and he still kept his voice. Now, I was lucky enough in a, I did a, a sort of my last tour of America, um, which sounds very grand, but it wasn't in California. And I, I'm not going to do any more speaking engagements there. I've done enough. I've done sort of five, six or so. Um, or not quite consecutive years, but almost. And I thought, you've had enough of me. I mean, there's a limit to how much you know you can do, really. But um, we got tickets to see McCartney um, at the SoFi Stadium. And the difference, there was McCartney, and I adored what he was doing and all the rest of it, but his voice had gone in in... I mean, it's still good, but I mean, it had gone by his very high standards. Whereas Rogers kept his somehow, yeah. and he he really can still belt out a song. So it was intriguing, and he's he's. Has he had any involvement still with the fishery then? Yeah, well, it's on his land. I mean, yeah, and his son's running it, but running it very well actually. Yeah. And they've got a brewery there. So <laughs> another reason to go. <laughs> Other that sounds like a good podcast yeah. opportunity there in a yeah. brewery as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to America. Went to New York um, and got fated. And, you know, it was just a thrill. I mean, I, and I, but I, I, I honestly, Kerry, I don't know how it came up. I mean, I got a phone call to say it, it's not common knowledge, but you are, have been asked. You know, it, I don't know if it's, would you like, I don't think they p- quite put it like that, but they said, we want to induct you into the uh, Hall of Fame. And I, I, I cried, I actually cried. I mean, to have that accolade. Yeah. You, you know, when you... Must be doing something right. Well, I, I don't know what. I mean, that, that's the honest truth. I don't know what. Because you've got America, which is not just one country it's it's a number of countries and to be known in that sort of width is extraordinary and they've got millions of fly fishers not just the odd thousand what names do you follow in the footsteps of now then oh, crikey or join well there's lefty cray and there's joan lovely joan wolf who i got to meet again after all these years and she's still so bright and nimble at 94, 96. Wow. I think I, I saw the photograph. Yeah, she's wonderful. Um, and um, Ted Nima, the, the, oh gosh, it goes on. All the Catskill fly tires. You've got um, Dave Whitlock, um, Lefty Cray, Flip Pal- Just, it, it's a, Eve, George LeBranch, it, it just goes on. They've even inducted, Isaac Walton, he wasn't around, but they've inducted yeah. him. Um, Preston Jennings, um, it just goes on. And it's the nearest I'll ever get to Robert Redford inducted Was him. he on it? He's on it because of... Um, the river, the river runs, runs through, through it. it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, well, well. Oh, that must have been. Hoagie so Carmichael special. is another one. Jazz, oh. the jazz, um, the the jazz. I think he was a pianist, but um, his son, who so, I know. So, what was the award then? What was it? A, a plaque or something? Was yeah, it, so it? you're. A, I'm a plaque on the wall. You know. Wow. I know. I'm there for all time. It's it's amazing. Do they do anything like that in the UK? No. <laughs> have to change no. that. Well, the, the, I remember there was, they have a show over there, Kerry, called Letterman. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. And it's a talk show and all the rest of it, and you get all these stars and showbiz personalities and what have you going on there. And they had Jimmy Page and, and Robert Plant on there, and they were about to be inducted in the Hall of Flame, in Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, or celebrated the Kennedy Center or something. And, and you know, there was going to be a big, big hoo-ha about them. And... Letterman said the same thing. He said, "Is there anything like this in UK?" No. <laughs> did you? No. Did you? Were you on Letterman? No. Oh right. No, they were. I'm, oh right. I'm just yeah. a lowly fly fisher. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I have vouchers available to spend on my online shop: the sign prints, gilly kettles, and other accessories, or for one of my guiding tuition packages. Plus, no taking bookings for my Corrib Farrox days for next season. So what do you do with yourself now then in regards for work? Is this, you're still doing the fishing for schools and that yeah. takes up most of your time, yeah? Yeah, still doing it um, because I want to do it and because there's stuff there to do. Over the Christmas period, Kerry, and this is brutally serious, um, we, we've got a young ambassador that I brought in because they developed through fishing for schools and went on to college and they probably would never have got anything in their lives in terms of a certificate or a, a qualification. And sheer character and, and, I don't know, just determination got them to that point with a little bit of help of fishing for schools. And um, he went to college and um, had some problems with online bullying and so forth. And I, it, it was pretty unsavoury. And... It caused him to have quite a lot of issues with his mental health. I had the occasion to go down and I, I was involved in a book with mostly coarse fishers and, and I knew that this chap would enjoy this. So I signed it and wrapped it up and drove it down to Kent and met up with his mother and him and who's you know, that she's going through, you know, what, what people don't understand is they say, oh, he's got, you know, he's got mental health issues or, or this, that, and that. but the ramifications and, and, and the issues that are then reverberate around the family unit are colossal. So it's almost like that ripple effect where you drop this small pebble and it hits the first little ring and then it expands and expands and gets bigger and bigger. So it affects more and more people. And, and that is mental health. I mean, people don't even talk about that aspect, that you, you have this family unit and, you know, it affects everyone. Yeah. Because if you've got somebody crumbling in the middle, everyone yeah. else has to either react or bolster up the situation and then what happens. And, and it, it's just, it, it really is a problem. Anyway, I went down. And so fishing for schools has got a huge role to play in mental health too. And we, we're jolly well going to do it this year. I'm going to be majoring on that because yeah. there is no better salve, no better healing um, ointment for what ails you uh, and fishing. I mean, you ask any angler, committed angler, if you go out onto a river or a lake or a canal or the sea or wherever – you try and think about something else other than that bite, other than that fish rising, other than that float yeah. twitching. It's absolutely 100%. Kids can be horrible, right, in school, you know, and if you're being picked on. And to a certain extent, I can speak from experience because when I was, what would I have been, about 15, something like that, only for a, a year or so, just over a year, I got picked on and I just didn't want to go to school. And I was being picked on. Mm. I went to an English-speaking school, mm. and I was the only one uh, who spoke Welsh. Fifteen hundred pupils. So then, there was a, a group of people who didn't like that, and I got picked on. Right, and then you just don't want to go to school. 
I just don't. And the one thing which kept me going through that time, I couldn't wait to go fishing. Yeah. And you go fishing, you don't even, th- it's out of your mind. Mm. But I think it's worse nowadays because I, I was able to escape in as much as, you know, I'd go fishing and whatever. But with social media now, there's so much oh, bullying and stuff. It's, you can't escape it for a child. It, it, it's like this avalanche. You're standing here as one single person. It's an avalanche of, of vitriol is coming straight towards you. And it's not It's not clever. It's not good. And, you know, it, people, you know, make slight light of this mental health thing. Um, but unless you've been privy to it, unless you've, you know, been right in the storm of it, you've got no idea that yeah. what it means to you uh, 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 and how it blights your entire life. Yeah. I mean, th- th- this is the crucial thing that, you know, we've got so much to do and so much to actually understand. We've got to listen more. What, what it taught me as well was because, you know, it knocks you a bit when you get somebody doing, picking on you or whatever, and you, do, you, you just mind is totally on it. And then when you go and fishing and then you start catching and you start catch more fish and you become good and it gives you confidence. When you got confidence then, it doesn't just stay with the fishing. It gives you confidence to do other things. Mm. And it was a massive thing for me, fishing. But it, it, even in fishing for schools, we, we, we've noticed that you, you can take somebody who's not particularly good at learning or whatever it is, and, and, and they're you know, sort of in the pecking order of life, a little bit lower down than the others. Yet sometimes they've got more aptitude to catching fish. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden... The respect that the others give them because they're doing stuff that the others can't do and they start going to them, well, what do you think I should be doing here or what bait should I be using or what should I be... And so all of a sudden from being down here, they're elevated to up there. So from you know the, their own social character perspective, it's been enhanced. Yeah. So no longer do they feel subjugated by the others they now part of the others if not above the others in some respect yeah so they're seen as you know it's an awful word seen as an equal yeah whereas be- before they weren't seen as an equal and it gives them a, a color a suntan because if we're not there's so many kids no appeal that's because they're in on the computer <laughs> There's two types of two types of children, one which are pale and they're geeky looking because they're on the computer playing games, and the other ones that look really healthy. You can tell which one fish is. I don't think we ought to go here. We, that's just, I think that's a difficult one to have, Curry Jones. Well, anyway, this weekend, I'm off to Elam Valley. And oh, yeah? The, yeah, yeah, because I saw some pictures on social media. But they're not fishing, are they? No, 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 mm. not fishing, but Elam Valley... The, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, everywhere was empty of water, but yeah. now they're overflowing. And somebody put a picture up of Cabin Coke, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the water was gushing over the top. So I want to get some pictures well, there. Well, coming up to see you today, coming up the valleys, it was like some sort of um, fairy tale painting. The water was just gushing out of the side of the rocks in this sort of silver explosion of, you know, ribbons and, you know. Yeah. Light yeah, yeah. and oh, well, you can fantastic. see things, can't you? Because you're an artist. Well, you you trying to? I think you're trained to observe. I think you know. I I guess yeah. I mean, yeah. I suppose I see life differently. But <laughs> I was trained to observe because last week I was coming back from Gam Fruit. Oh yeah. And I was driving down the road, and there was a petrol station on the side. And diesel was one fifty three. <laughs> <laughs> I slammed the brakes and came round and one fifty one fifty three for diesel. Oh, but then you're Oil using wheels. that dirty polluting substance. You see, I'm yeah, you don't need this electric. No, uh, no, don't get me on that. I think no. I think we're being sold one. On but that. the reason I was getting on to Elam Valley and I was telling you because I remember one of the first times oh. we met. You lived in Clanotid, didn't you? Was yeah. It yeah, 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 and. I'm not sure if it was Didn't that weekend. Didn't stop raining there either. Yeah, no, I could imagine. But then, I'm, I'm not sure if it was a... I came to your house once yep. there. In fact, I come on to this other story, but I came to your house and I was planned to go to Sweden, actually, the following week. And I had leaky waders. But as I went through the door, I noticed in your, your big, grand, lovely house, in the hallway, you must have had about 12 pairs of waders. Do you remember that? Yeah. 
And then I said, oh, I need a pair of waders. And you said, take a pick. Oh, fair play. You give me a pair of waders and well, go to go. Sweden. Did they leak? No, they didn't. Oh, thank goodness for that. But they were, I think they were. Must have given you the, the good pair. The <laughs> thickest <laughs> neoprene ones I've ever had. But, and I took them to Sweden. Did you know why? I must have lost a stone. Did These, you sweat a, a bit? Sweat. Oh, oh yeah. and carrying them because yeah. you wouldn't take neoprenes abroad now, would you? In a plane. I tell you what, I still wear them occasionally, especially if I'm float tubing, especially, and that's the when we met because yeah. we were float tubing. With Chris. Yeah. Do you remember going that, that little tiny precipitous little road up to yeah. nowhere? Chris was panicking. Yeah, well, he always did. I mean, have you ever, did you ever fly with him? Yes. Oh, no. It was, <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I still got sort of finger marks. And, We're going to die. We're going to die. He said, and you hit a bump. You hit, a, you know, a slight bit of turning. Yeah. We're going to go. We're going to, you know, no, Chris, it's, it's kind of all right. You know, they've done this before. Now, calm down. I yeah. miss him. I do miss him. Yeah. Wonderful editor. Wonderful. Yeah, he was very good, isn't he? Yeah. I remember we were flying somewhere. I'm not sure where it was. And um, I was on the aisle seat, and he was on the opposite side aisle seat. And there was a guy next to him had a panic attack. When we were taken off, they calmed him down. And when they were landing... And Chris, you couldn't look at him. Chris was like turned as much as he could, facing towards me, and he looked terrified. Cause he, <laughs> and do you know what? And I couldn't help him because I was just weak. There's this guy physically pulling his hair out, screaming. What? Yeah, yeah. And Chris was looking at me. He's just, why are you right next to him? You know. <laughs> I can't think of two most inappropriate people to fly with. <laughs> uh. Who was with us on that trip as well? It was um, John Wilshaw. Oh, John was lovely. Oh, yeah, hey, John. And Another great, great editor. No, do you know what? It's just almost he's disappeared. And I think he's gone. He's passed away? I think so. Never. Yeah, I think so. All right, because uh, I was talking to Peter Cockrell about him the other day. And I'm almost certain. He seems have. to think he's around, but he doesn't. I don't do- know. I'd Hope love he to, is. Yeah, I'd love to meet up with him again. He's a great storyteller, isn't he? Yeah. Good angler, too. My goodness. Yeah. I travelled a lot with him over the years. And then he just disappeared. Uh, but he was Welsh. Oh, he liked to tell people he was Welsh. Yeah. Oh. I think he moved there when he was a kid, I think. All oh, right. I know you, he, um, on your website you said you've got New Year's resolutions. But is there one thing, a goal, which you want to do this year? Um, is there a goal I want to do this year? Um, you know, I did say, oh, I, you know, I want to be better at everything I do. And I think, you know, I... At the age of, you know, coming up for 70, I mean, it's a seminal moment in anybody's life. I mean, you you do suddenly have that jolt of, crikey, I've been on this planet this long. Um, but, you know, I'm still that bright-eyed kid who just is excited about everything and all the possibilities in front of me. And that's never going to diminish. And I don't think it's an age thing. It's just a, it's an inner vibrancy. And that's... That's it, really. I'm just excited by life. I I really am. I've got grandchildren. I, you know, I, I can look at the sport and say, my goodness me, thank you. It's given me everything I've ever needed. What and a, a bit more. Um, what a sport it is, too. It really is. One thing I think i got to say, that which I want to do this year, a goal of mine, is to go back to Colliford. Have you ever been to Colliford Lake? God, that's down in Cornwall, Bod- isn't it? Yeah, Bodmin Moor. Why? Do you know why it opened my eyes? I fished it last year for the very first time. Okay. What a place. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll come with you. Yeah. We'll get fun- Cockwell. That's right, yeah. He's, he's a Cornwall guy. I mentioned yeah. it to him, yeah. yeah that would could. be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. The three it of us would go down there. We'd do a podcast from Colliford. Yeah, know? beside the shore. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. Because the, 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 there's something that's totally different about it. It's full of brown trout. It's like, it's like Talabont, actually. Sort of the, I don't know, <laughs> Not <for> uh, me. <laughs> three quarters of a pound, something right. like that, to a, a pound. And there are, there's always bigger fish. But that's the main fish you catch. You know what? I think I may have fished Colliford. I think I fished Colliford with Alex. Could it be then? You but just sort of walk down, you go to this little booth and you buy a ticket in the middle of nowhere. It is in the middle of nowhere. But um, it's, it's a huge reservoir. It's a funny shape. And it's it's not far, short drive from what's that pub? You now a famous 
pub on the moor. Jeez, I can't remember who's calling them. You're asking the wrong person about pubs. I, I, my father could not go past a pub. All right? He couldn't. I mean, it was like this sort of magnet. As soon as he saw a pub sign, psh, straight nice. in. Jamaica in. Oh, right. Jamaica in. Uh, okay. Um, but, yeah. I don't like him. I do like a pub near the lake. Uh, That's why I like Wimble Ball. I do. Yeah, George. St. Saint George's? The okay. King, uh, I just go to the lake and fish, my yeah. friend. Yeah. The George. And it's open on the Feb- George. It's on open on February the 1st. Yeah. I went to book yesterday. I bet it's full, is it? Well, last night, there's eight boats left. And I, I, I forgot to do it. Yeah. And stay at the George. It's, it's better off the bank early season. Yeah, more swears than was that, really. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more fun. Yeah. Because if it's really hostile, you can get in your car and get out of the, you know, issue. Yeah. You know, there are some wind tunnels on that reservoir. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a funny sort of shape, isn't it? You always get some shelter. I don't uh, think up y- to a point. Yeah. <laughs> There's only so many bank spots you can fish from, isn't there, I think? Oh, you can fish all around it. Yeah. I noticed you just, the last time I saw, the last time I literally saw you was that day when you fished the boat and you went in. Next minute, you appeared on the bank, didn't you? And yeah. then you disappeared again. I thought, I hope you didn't fall in because I just didn't see you. No. No, I was taking <laughs> photographs. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the things I want to do. Is Not fish as good as yours, food. actually. Well, You're doing good thanks stuff. Thanks for seeing that. I, uh, got to have a sharp one now and again. Now, here's a plug. He's the best portraitist I've seen with a camera. Well, talking of which, when we finish this now, I've got to take this opportunity to photograph you now. Because I don't know if the people listening realise we're in my studio now at home and I've set this up. So that would be a nice thing to do. Some nice portrait. And you've got your best hat as well. I've got my best hat and I've got my best dog. What can possibly go wrong? Yeah, definitely shoot the dog as well now. <laughs> don't shoot the dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, many thanks for the chat. And uh, hopefully we'll see you a lot more now that you're only down the road. Just down the road, indeed. Yeah. Many thanks, Charles. It's a pleasure, Kerry. If you've enjoyed this podcast and want to listen to more, including my previous chat with Charles, episode 10, please consider becoming a Patreon. Well, you will get over 90 past episodes and weekly podcasts, plus photography and exclusive content. To join, visit patreon.com forward slash Casting with Kerry Jones. Or see the link on my website, castingwithkerryjones.com. Well, that's all for now. Tight lines and don't strike too soon. <laughs>